Hi, we're Jerry and Diana. I have von Hippel-Lindau, a rare disease that causes tumors to grow in different parts of the body. I started a new drug in November of 2021. Four days ago, I flew to NIH, the National Institutes of Health, to have blood tests and scans to see how I'm doing. So I had this insane day. I had to check out of the hotel by 6.15 this morning. So then I went downstairs. I had to get my receipt for vouchers. Good morning. It is 6.15 and they have a cab coming for me at 6.30 because I have a test. Well, I have the IV placement for a test at 7 a.m. So it's early morning. Didn't sleep much last night. Waiting for my cab. Don't know what it's going to look like. anxious this morning because I haven't had this test, I don't think, maybe, I don't know. 8.30, the voucher office opens to get my reimbursement for my hotel, but 8.30 is the test, and it takes two hours, so I won't be done until 10.30. 11.30 is my appointment with Neuro. I don't know where I'm making this all work, or how. Oh, and I've got to make my airplane by 5, so i got to get on to the clock shovel. So that's going to make it interesting. <laughs> I probably won't get to film during it. I'm going to have to let you know how it all turned out. I had to meet a cab at 6.30, but it was early, and I got in it early. It was Barwood, thank goodness. They paid for the cab. The uh, NIH, NIH paid for the cab. Nice. And it got to take me all the way up to the people entrance for the patient entrance. I didn't know if the cab could come inside. Well, they let the cab on campus. Yes. Cool. Drop me off. So that was nice. So then I had a couple minutes. The gal that's in charge of me for the study, the pancreas study, the endocrine study, she's been texting me. And so she would tell me what to do. So I'm like, I've arrived. I'm like, I'm really hungry. Can I eat or am I NPO? She says, you can eat a little bit of something. And I was like, perfect. I have a 50 calorie fruit leather. That's perfect for a little something. I ate that, drank lots of water. I have arrived at NIH. I had a second for a little snack and now I am headed to the 12th floor. Then I had to be on the 12th floor. Did you know there's a 12th floor? I didn't know there was a 12th outpatient floor. There's I've never been up there. I've been not, to 10. Not all of the, I don't, I don't know what to call them, parts of it go to the same height, right? Right. But there is, I know there is a 12th floor. The chapel I, goes to like the seventh. I've been on it for some reason. I oh. don't remember I got lost or Okay. Well, I've been to ten, but this was twelve, which was oncology. I didn't know oncology was twelve. I had to meet them at seven. But the doors were locked and there was already a patient waiting. This is the view from the twelfth floor. They didn't open the doors till seven after and so they made us right in and we were all late. And they took me in back and they had an ultrasound machine for IV placement. Why doesn't CT and MRI have one? Right. So he placed it, but he took his time. I mean, I was up there for almost, I think I was back there a half an hour and really yeah. placed it. So now PET scan is already calling, where's Diana Beal? At eight o'clock. She was still placed with the IV at eight. I was due there at 8.30. But at eight o'clock, they're going, where is she? got my IV placed in my forearm, no, my upper arm, and now I'm headed to PET scan. They were waiting for me. Half hour early. I have to run directly there, right? Because they're asking for me, even though it wasn't time yet. So I ran down to PET scan, and it took them 20 minutes to get me situated. They needed me there at 8. I don't know why the orders were for 8.30. So she brings out the lead box because it's got my radioactive tracer that they're gonna put in me in the lead box. She puts it from a lead a syringe. And I said, well, what do you guys do to make sure you're safe? And she said, we have this. And she's got a little arm on her that will go off if she's positive for radioactive. And I had a letter. Oh, they did think I was radioactive when I went through security. So I just sit for 45 minutes, so I edited it. They came and they put me in a pet cat scan machine or a cat scan pet machine, I don't know. It's another 40 minutes. 
they say leave the IV in, go to OP3, and they're gonna take more blood. OP3 is uh, urology, pancreas. Now I disobey, now I run off. I run to vouchers. Because I have to turn in my receipt for the hotel or I won't get reimbursed. Right. And I have to give them time to do it or I'll miss my flight. I timed myself, I did vouchers in under 10 minutes. I ran up there, I gave it to her, she says you only have two days paid. Your third day is not covered. I had to think it out. It took me about 20 minutes of thinking to figure it out, 15 minutes, but I did two days of kidney and I did one day of neuro. So brain and spine scans yeah. last night and my appointment today so that's their study their study pays all right we're going past seattle and i see the stadium i flew over the stadium and i could see the people in it watching the game how cool is that so now i get back well a nurse is allowed to take blood back out of your iv start the lab is not the lab has to pull you every time. So once you have that IV start, they send you to OP3 to pull the labs, and they pulled another 10 miles. So I've had 30 miles of blood drawn on this trip. By now it's 11.15, and I am due in brain and spine at 11.30. So I go out into the hallway. Remember with my kidney surgery where I got on that um, like wooden horse dog mm -hmm. thing, that's where I was. Oh, okay. Outside of OP3, wooden horse dog thing. And I see this gal again that was there at, at oncology before I was. Right. And I'm just like, okay, are you going to neuro next? And she said, yes. And I'm like, okay, are you in from VHL? And she's like, yeah. And so then we ended up talking. Now I go to neurosurgery. Oh, when's your flight? They bring me in right away. Dr vacation in Greece so I only see the fellow nobody else comes to talk to me and you started bull zero fan one uh, November 15th okay so all your tumors in your brain have shrunk spine looks exactly the same and yeah the brain tumors have shrunk quite a bit Yay. so no concern from us no new lesions no new cysts oh, everything's God. great good there was one midline tumor that we were really watching. Do you yeah, remember if it says in the, yeah, I try in the report? I can pull it up. So I'll put the new one to the left. And the old MRI is right. This is when we were watching? Yeah. That's before, this is now. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. So everything is pretty much shrunk. Wow. Stop told me I was good, basically got me out of there. Um, so now I'm out and I have to go pick up my voucher. And then um, I had a text from that she was, because her surgery is tomorrow. So she texted me that she was in phlebotomy. So I walked over to phlebotomy and saw her and she was thrilled to see me. She was so happy. And then they called her back and we came out. So then where does she want to take me? To her room on 3 Northwest. Yeah. And I'm telling her, you can't have visitors. This is COVID. And she goes, yes, I can. I can do it. And I said, no, they're never going to let me in. They hate me there. They hate me there. They know me. Because I, just, I am the laundry person who broke the laundry protocol. There's no way they're gonna let me in. She goes, well, I'm gonna bring you in. She took me in the back and brought me in. When the, her nurse came in, she was just like, I have the nicest nurse, she's so nice. This is my friend from Seattle. She had the surgery here. And she just talked her ear off so the gal never asked, oh, did you check in at the front desk? <laughs> so I helped her with her puzzle. And then finally I said, you gotta let me eat something because I have been NPO all day. Like I've had a fruit leather and it's two o'clock. So she finally let me leave the room. She didn't want me to go. But I had to go. I had to catch up. It was two o'clock. My shuttle's at 2.30. Yeah. If I'm gonna eat anything and then, you know, there's just the one cafe and it's backed up. Yeah. 
they call it a Starbucks, that cracks me up. Just because you serve Starbucks coffee does not make you a Starbucks. That is not a Starbucks. That's not a Starbucks. Kiosk, a food kiosk. If I go in my kitchen and make a cup of Starbucks brand coffee, I am not a Starbucks. So I went down and I bought a bag of chips and I ate a bag of chips and then I got the queue for my shuttle, which was then 15 minutes late, but that's not an area you're allowed to eat in. She was late, so we got on there, so then she was driving like a bat out of hell. It's like, I mean, you're just jostled the whole time in this special bus. delayed because there was weather and they stopped they stopped and refueled because they're going to need extra fuel for rerouting around the weather but I didn't know what the plan was they didn't tell us well this is how we're going to reroute how they rerouted was everything was socked in in this big like it's going to be a big storm right except there was one hole in it way off so we flew up and through the hole. I mean, you literally could see the hole and then we just went up thousands and thousands and thousands of feet to get to the hole and get above the storm. It was crazy. It would definitely, definitely take extra fuel. This is my day. This is to die and then the people that were flying with me would let me get up to use the restroom. So I sat for six hours. They're like, do you want water? I'm like, nope. No more water. And here I am. And you're like, oh, you're hungry? I'm like, yeah, I haven't had a meal since dinner. So that was my crazy day. That was one day. And that day was only a half day. So you can imagine what the other two days were like. And I didn't have my pancreas appointment yet, though. They can't see me in clinic till the 5th. So I'm going to do it telehealth. Uh, other than that, your tumors are pretty much really stable. And we compare that to the one last year and the year prior. You have about four of them. All of them were small. Okay. Okay. They're all in the head, cluster in the head, the pancreas, like most of these BHL related uh, tumors in the pancreas. You have a few scattered, but not a lot. So I suspect and I expect that your pancreas function should be fine. Well seen compared to last year, and that has to do with the contrast sequence. So we counted three this year, but you know, prior years we know you had about four. Okay. Now it makes me think that whether it may not be contrast and it may have actually responded. Thank you for watching my trip to NIH to see more of my medical stuff. Watch this video or down here and there's a video that YouTube picked out just for you.